Hello everyone and welcome! In today's video, I'm taking a look at the Red Cat Gen 8 version 2 110 scale RC crawler. While this particular crawler has been on the market for a while now, I recently scored this one on sale for just 230 US dollars from the Red Cat website. Already I've been very impressed with this truck, and for that price I almost feel like I stole it, so let's dive right in and take a closer look. This is my first Red Cat product, though I've had my eye on some of their vehicles for a while now. They've got a really impressive selection of both on-road and off-road vehicles, with this version 2 of the Gen 8 being a popular crawler. Many of their vehicles are priced very competitively, making them a popular option for beginner and more experienced hobbyists alike. This truck here does come fully ready to run, as do many of their vehicles, however you will need to provide your own batteries and charger if you don't have them already. Getting the truck out of the box, as you can see, it looks great. I'll have a look at those other items that are included in just a bit, but just having a look at the truck, there's certainly a lot to admire. I really like the officially licensed International Harvester Scout 2 body, which is what really drew me to this platform in the beginning. While not as popular as the Broncos and Blazers, it's a very cool 4x4 to model a RC crawler after. This is a Lexan body, which is advantageous for performance, Though while I, and probably many of you watching this channel, may prefer hard bodies and trucks with a little greater emphasis on scale realism, Red Cat is really doing a great job of enhancing the appearance of this body with many additional details such as the inner fenders, grille, lights, and side view mirrors. All it really needs is some form of an interior to complete the look. You have two color choices, a metallic bright green and this metallic purple. The metallic paint looks really good out in the sun. I'm a big fan of the paint that comes on this truck, and there's also a bunch of included decals, including stripes and additional emblems. I appreciate that they left the windows clear. Sure, it may look a little ugly seeing right down to the chassis in its current state, but for those who want to put an interior in, this is a huge bonus. For those who don't, you can always black out the windows yourself if you'd like. The body is held on using Velcro. It's pretty strong, so I can't imagine you would ever have any issues with the body coming off unintentionally. The Velcro can get a little bit annoying, so for those who prefer magnets, there are provisions for magnetic body mounts molded into the inner fenders, however you'll need to purchase some magnets separately as they are not included with this truck. Especially when I considered what I paid for this, I can't complain at all about the chassis. It feels solid and the oil-filled shocks seem to work really well. It's got 2.2 inch B-lock wheels and officially licensed Interco tires that seem to perform pretty well out on the trails. I believe these are the largest wheels I have on any of the trucks that I own, and when combined with the portal axles that this chassis has, this thing will absolutely cruise down the trails with little concern about it getting hung up on roots, rocks, or other annoying obstacles. The layout of the electronics and drivetrain keeps a lot of the weight towards the front of the vehicle. I really like the lifelike drivetrain layout with the divorce transfer case as well as the chassis mounted servo. Overall the chassis seems well designed and well built. All of the fasteners were tight and once I installed the battery this thing was ready to go. It reminds me a lot of the Axial SCX-10 3 chassis that I reviewed earlier this year but I've yet to do a really in-depth side-by-side -side comparison just yet. Looking at some of the other included items, they include a nice manual which will be a good resource especially for newer hobbyists. You also get the optional body mounting parts if you want to change the body, as well as some of the parts that you'll need to install the LED lights. I've been pretty impressed with the included transmitter. It's comfortable to hold, and for a ready to run transmitter, it feels pretty well made. I did however find myself missing that thumb control extension present on that transmitter included with the SCX-10-3 Bronco. I could definitely see myself adding something similar to this transmitter myself, as it does come in handy when I want to drive the truck with one hand. Since I scored such a good deal on the truck, I thought I'd get the light kit that goes with it as well. This kit here is from Red Cat and is sold separately, but it is specifically designed for the Scout 2 body. It includes everything you'll need to add LED lighting to this truck. All of the wires are the correct length, and the instructions make it clear how everything goes together. Overall, it was a very easy process to install the lights. You just want to take your time and make sure each light goes in the correct spot, and that you tidy up the wires so they don't get caught on something while you're driving. You may find it easier to remove the headlights as I have here, 
in order to get better access to them when installing the LEDs. I ended up using some smaller size screws than the ones that were included with the truck to install the LEDs for the taillights. If I had uninstalled the taillights from the body and applied more pressure, the M2 hardware that was included would probably have fit the holes just fine. I could have also bored them out a little bit. But again, I just used some slightly smaller M1.7 screws to hold these LEDs in place. This truck looks so cool with the LEDs installed, and you have the option of making the brake lights function, and the reverse lights do come on when reversing. In the video, you will notice that the LEDs are flashing. This is simply because of the frame rate of the camera. The LEDs are solidly illuminated when looking at them with the naked eye. I think my only nitpick with the lights would be that the reverse lights don't come on until you move the throttle trigger pretty far back way faster than I would usually reverse while driving normally. Also note that there is no way to turn off or on the lights from the transmitter. When the lights are plugged in and the ESC is on, the lights will be illuminated. Overall, I think it really enhances the appearance of the Scout. And those eight bright white LEDs facing the front do a great job of lighting the path in front of you when driving at night. If you have one of these Gen 8 Scout 2s, I would certainly recommend this kit. We know this truck looks good and it sure seems solid, so all that's left to do now is to take it onto the trails. While I haven't yet put a lot of miles on this truck, so far I'm impressed. As I said earlier, the combination of those big wheels and portal axles really prevent this truck from getting caught up on roots, rocks, or other obstacles. While portal axles do increase the center of gravity, it doesn't seem to be as huge of a concern on this truck because of that Lexan body and lack of any sort of interior. If you plan to drive this truck competitively though, some different tires and some wheel weights would probably be beneficial. The electronics seem to be about what you'd expect from a ready-to-run crawler. Certainly not exceptional, but by no means bad. The motor feels like it has plenty of torque and will allow the truck to creep very slowly over various obstacles, and the steering servo seems to have sufficient power in most scenarios. It'll certainly get the job done for many hobbyists out there just wanting to run some trails and don't necessarily need comp-level performance. It's very smooth both with the drivetrain and suspension. There's not a ton of slop in the drivetrain, and the shocks work very well and seem to be well tuned to the weight of this vehicle. No excessive torque twist or bump steer or any significant amount of play in the steering in general. All in all, a lot of fun to drive, and I'm certainly looking forward to getting out there again. For the price I paid, I feel like I stole this rig, but even for the regular price of $330, it sure seems like a reasonable price for what you're getting. While I may be a bit late to the Gen 8 party, it goes to show that sometimes it pays to wait, and with both Black Friday and the holidays just around the corner, keep your eyes peeled for some sweet deals. While there certainly will be some times I'm going to favor taking out one of my more scale rigs, as I do really enjoy the challenge and the added realism that those trucks offer, this Gen 8 though seems like it's going to be a go-to for general trail driving and tackling more difficult terrain. I could definitely see myself putting an interior in it at some point, but overall I'm pretty satisfied with how the truck looks right out of the box. Overall I'm very impressed and I'm certainly going to be keeping my eye on future releases from Red Cat. If you own one of these trucks, let me know what you think below in the comments. But that's going to be all for today's video. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.